Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're here, I'm here with Commissioner Rodney Ellis and County Attorney Christian Menefee. Um, County Attorney will speak first, then Commissioner Ellis, and I'll close out and we'll take questions. Um, and we're here to talk about the Harris Hand Up, which we're all very proud of. Thank you, Judge. I'm County Attorney Christian Menefee. Uh, today we're here in the latest round of state leaders singling out Harris County and the good people and residents that we serve. Attorney General Ken Paxton, at the urging of a state senator who is obsessed with Harris County government, has sued Harris County to block us from pro providing direct cash assistance to some of the lowest income families in our county. The message that they're sending to Harris County residents is clear. Republican leaders in Austin oppose families getting the help that they need when they're in tough time. As families navigate the major economic changes we've faced over the last few years, local governments across our country have used federal funds from CARES and ARPA to pilot guaranteed basic income programs. And I do mean across the entire U.S. We've seen these types of programs in St. Paul, uh, Minnesota, to Cook County, Illinois, to San Antonio, and El Paso, right here in the state of Texas. And of course, under President Biden, under former President Trump, under former President Bush, the federal government has sent stimulus checks directly to families, no strings attached. These programs have a real impact, and the reports and the data that comes from these studies show that families who participate in these local government pilot programs spent the money on necessities. So we're talking food, utilities, and other basic needs, and they experienced lower rates of un unemployment, higher rates of housing and food security, and a higher sense of self-determination. The county's program, Uplift Harris, is a pilot program, and it's similar to each and every one of these programs. It would provide $500 per month to 1,900 families in high poverty areas. Importantly, this is fully funded by federal dollars. One of the main questions that I've been getting from residents about this lawsuit is why the heck does Ken Paxson care? This is not state money, this is federal money, and we're trying to help people. With his lawsuit, Attorney General Ken Paxton has decided that Harris County residents are unworthy of getting the direct help they need from their government. To achieve this goal, he misconstrues the Texas Constitution, attempting to find refuge in language that is so outdated that by its own terms it applies only to free men in our state. Well, let me dispel the misinterpretations. A guaranteed basic income program is not an illegal gift of public funds. The many cases that have interpret, uh, interpreted this constitutional provision make clear that this provision was designed to prevent cronyism, not programs that benefit the public. That's why our state has programs like TANF. That's why the Attorney General didn't utter a word about the guaranteed basic income pilot programs in areas like San Antonio, Austin, and El Paso County. And that's why this Attorney General himself has issued an opinion that local law enforcement officials can make donations directly to nonprofit organizations using public money. This program clearly benefits the public. Study after study after study has shown that when folks receive a guaranteed basic income, they use that money on necessities. That benefits our entire community, allows themselves to lift themselves up out of poverty, giving them more money to better participate in our economy. Second, nor does the county doing this as a randomized pilot program make the program illegal. Local governments have limited resources, and the law allows those local governments to decide how best to allocate those resources as long as they do so in a rational way. That's why if you're a Houstonian who's in need of public housing and you go apply to be on the Section 8 housing list, you're going to be on the list, and in many instances you will not come off that list. That's why there are scholarships that have public money that go directly to only a select few individuals. And that's why when I was in high school, trying to decide which school to go to, the choice wasn't mine. I was put in a lottery system to go to one of three schools in the district because no one school could house every single kid that was in that district. Today, we're seeing an example of partisan politics dragging us to the courts. The Attorney General's office is currently attempting to schedule a hearing on this matter on whether the county's program should be blocked. My office will be representing the county in that proceeding and throughout the rest of the case. After that, my guess is this case is going to go to the Texas Supreme Court. This is the same court with the justice who, in a recent speech, praised a Republican state senator for, quote, fighting against Harris County officials. So let's just say that I am less than confident
that the county is going to get a fair shake in the Texas Supreme Court. To the Harris County residents who are watching this today, I ask that you remember today. Remember that your county government was taking action to help lift up families with direct cash assistance. And remember that Republican politicians in, in Austin, the same politicians who have no problem helping out big business, no problem helping out their buddy CEOs, block those families and those communities from getting that help. Um, the county has my commitment that my office is going to vigorously defend uh, this program. Uh, we'll see what the courts say, uh, but I just want to thank Commissioner's Court for stepping in and doing the right thing to try to help families throughout our county. If it wasn't a problem when San Antonio did it, if it wasn't a problem when Austin did it, if it wasn't a problem when El Paso County did it, shouldn't be a problem when Harris County does it. Thank you. I'm Rodney Ellis, and I do want to say how proud I am, Judge, that you would juggle your schedule <clears throat> to have this press conference, and how proud I am of our great county attorney. I did joke in the other room before we came that I put on this blue tie with elephants on it because it seems like my former colleagues in the legislature spent a lot of time trying to put their hands around my neck. Uh, but I don't take it personal. You said it best, Christian. That's a target on Harris County. And the reason is because deep in the heart of Red Texas, Harris County is the biggest Democratic stronghold, and it matters. Harris County is bigger than 25 states, and that matters, people. But let's be clear about what matters here on this issue. Uplift Harris is uh, about helping struggling families make ends meet, put food on the table, and keep the lights on. We're talking about seniors who choose between meals and medication. Workers who put in 40 hours or more a week and still don't have enough to make it out of poverty. Parents who worry about whether they're going to make rent or keep the lights on. Children who are growing up in poverty. It's about people living under the crushing weight of poverty and just striving for a moment to breathe and a chance to make their lives better. This is what Uplift Harris is about. It's about the people that we all serve. Don't let the state make it about anything else. I want to repeat that. Don't let the state make this about anything else. They need to be held accountable to the people they are failing every day with their policies of neglect and extremism. The lawsuit attacking Uplift Harris Guaranteed Income Program is an attack on the people of Harris County. It reads more like a MAGA manifesto than a legal document and reveals a state that has grown too far and too comfortable with using people as props in a cruel game of political gamemanship, political theater. This program was carefully vetted and fulfills a vital public person, purpose. The law is clear. That public purpose is getting people out of poverty. Guaranteed income is a proven way to create economic development opportunities for people and communities that our state often tries to ignore and put aside. It's one of the few things I can think of that Martin Luther King, Richard Nixon, and Dr. Milton Friedman agreed on. Might be the only thing that all three agreed on. The reality is that Austin extremists like Ken Paxton, Dan Patrick, and Senator Bentoncourt, who took a PPP loan, don't care about the law, are serving Texas families. What they care about is maintaining a system that favors billionaires and starving working families of the support they need to drive. Nearly two thirds of American voters, Democrats, Republicans, and independents support guaranteed income programs. Reasonable and compassionate people across the political spectrum understand that payments can be used to make necessary purchases and empower people experiencing poverty to transform their own lives with benefits that benefit them and benefit society at large. That's the power and the potential of programs like Uplift Harris to give these people a chance to put their lives on a better track. Uh, at the local level, we refuse to be bystanders as soaring economic inequality has led to 750,000 members of our community in a position where they endure a relentless cycle of poverty. We can do better, we're gonna fight it all the way. Christian, I will say this, 
I took a little bike ride around my law school. I didn't get into the good one you got into. But I took a ride around the University of Texas this morning, and I thought about when I read those great constitutional law cases, known as the civil rights cases, that were all anti-civil rights. How brilliant writers and legal minds use outright bigotry to justify what they were doing. I hope, and I know some members of the Texas Supreme Court, when it gets there, I hope they will rise above petty political partisanship. Some things matter more than whether or not you satisfy your political base. Thank you. Now, Judge it out. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you all so much. Um, and thank you, County Attorney and your team. I know John Feldman's here with us for, for the work that you guys continue to do on, on this. And let me just let me just mention why we're here. We passed Uplift Harris and we um, announced it almost a year ago. Almost a year ago is June of last year. And we did this because guaranteed income is one of the oldest and most successful anti-poverty programs out there. When my team first told me Milton Friedman and Richard Nixon and MLK all were proponents of this program, I almost didn't believe them. When they told me that it has been shown to work not just in the US but in other countries, I knew this was something we had to do. Roughly one in six Harris County residents live in poverty, which is a higher rate than other large counties in the state and in the nation. As people already know, it's possible in this county, right here in Harris County, to work full time, to work multiple jobs, and to still not be able to pay for basic necessities. That's what this program seeks to address. We had more than 82,500 people apply for this program. The need is enormous. In other jurisdictions, recent data shows that programs like this one help increase employment rates, help strengthen families, help improve health outcomes, and improve mental health outcomes. More than 80 cities and counties around the nation, as well as other nations around the world, have been successful. And I know they like to call it some sort of a socialist experiment from left-leaning jurisdictions. But similar programs were passed in Arizona and other states that certainly can't be called liberal. If Ken Paxson succeeds in getting an injunction, as his lawsuit calls for, he and Texas far-right Republicans will be responsible for taking $500 a month away from the 1,928 low-income Harris County families who are expecting their first payment on April 24th and have been expecting that payment since March 18th. Today is April 10th. These families are counting on this support for basic necessities, to pay for groceries, to pay for utility bills, and Ken Paxton is playing political games with their lives, and I ask, that Mr. Paxton come down and meet with some of these families and tell them straight to their face and see what it was that they were gonna use those dollars for and tell them that never mind, it's not arriving anymore. We reject the premise that there's a legal conversation to be had here in the first place. But given that they're pretending like there's a legal conversation, let's look at the lawsuit. It's political speech, okay? It's not a legal document. They've branded it. They've branded it uh, cheekily, the Harris handout. I guess they could have gone for a Hidalgo handout because they're making it all about me. Um, and if you, if, you, if you turn the pages, you know, it's like a basic lawsuit, except that it's really short. It's 16 pages. So folks here who are familiar at all with, the, with lawsuits, it's 16 pages. This is jurisdiction and venue background. Let me, let me point you to the pages where he makes his argument. Double spaced footnotes. Here's one page. Here is the second page. And then after that, it ends. The argument is explained in two pages, double spaced with footnotes, taking up a good chunk of the bottom of the page. And so most of it's rhetoric, okay? I read it, 
it's a branding campaign. There's no argument. It says our program violates the Constitution because it violates the Constitution. It says programs must have a public purpose, and this program doesn't have a pu public purpose. Obviously, the public purpose is to reduce poverty. Somebody off the street could tell you that. It says the program arbitrarily selects recipients. If you go to the website, you could see in one minute that you weren't allowed to apply unless you met very specific qualifications on income and very specific qualifications on geographic location. Trump himself instituted and touted a program in 2020 that sent checks to individuals beneath a certain income level. He put a signature on the checks, I remember, because I received one. Republicans, far-right Republicans, only care about this program now because we're doing it right here in Harris County. Now, not in the lawsuit, but in, in Paxson's sensationalized press release, he says that certain classifications of non-citizens would be eligible for the program. It's trying to make it sound like this is some ploy to, under the radar, give this uh, support to undocumented immigrants. This money can only go to U.S. citizens or people who have protected legal status. These are lawful permanent residents, people with green cards, people who've been granted asylum, political refugees, people who've been granted protection under immigration law and so forth. I was in college when I had a green card myself. I didn't become a full U.S. citizen until 2013. And I can tell you, having a green card means being here legally. I don't know what political calculation they made or what happened that caused them to file this lawsuit this week, but it's really cruel, the timing of this, and I, I truly hope that the Texas Supreme Court sees that. We announced this program, as I said, in June. Senator Benincourt sent his letter to Ken Paxton challenging the program in January. Recipients were selected and were notified in mid-March. It's April 10th. The timeline is not new. It's been public for months since last year. This is unscrupulous of Betancourt, of Paxton, of these far-right Republicans that are behind this attempt to play with people's lives. If Trump Republicans had a, pro a problem with this program, they needed to raise it before the families were selected and before the families were counting on these dollars. Honestly, that's what we were expecting. After Ben Court sent that letter, we figured something like this would come. When it didn't, and the date to tell the recipients they'd been awarded, the support came and went, we figured that must be it. Harris County used to be a rubber stamp for whatever came out of the Texas legislature and whatever came out of these folks' ideas. When I took office, when we took office, we changed that and they don't like that. We're doing better as a community. We've done incredible work, but they don't like that we do things in a way different from what they would do. Newsflash, it's democracy, guys. We were elected by the people of Harris County. And we are making these decisions with the confidence of the people of Harris County. This is not just cruel, is not just laughable, two pages double-spaced. It's dangerous for democracy. They do it all the time. They sued over election laws. They so sued over our use of COVID masks. I'd forgotten this, the, the um, Chronicle reminded me. The Texas Comptroller accused us of defunding the police and then he rescinded the accusation. They enjoy it. The problem is the five million people who live in Harris County are their constituents also. I can handle being called falsely a socialist all day long, okay? But the families whose plans and livelihoods are being caught up in this are not deserving of this kind of behavior by their elected leaders. Texas leaders do this with impunity because they know the people they're hurting are not their billionaire donors, but everyday people with limited political power. These hardworking families of Harris County don't have access to the millionaires and billionaires Ken Paxton used to fund his criminal legal defense. They are just trying to get by. 
They're calling it the Harris handout. I think we ought to call, it, call out then the Paxton payments, how he used federal funds, how he used public funds to keep out a federal court, how he used Texans dollars to object to 2020 election results in other states. Your dollars went to a lawsuit that was never going to work to object to election <clears throat> results as far as Pennsylvania. Or we could call it the Benton Court benefit, how he took public federal dollars in the form of PPP loans, if we're trying to play with words. This isn't just going to affect Harris County families. We've seen time and time again that what Texas does, other states follow, that they end up lowering the bar of what far-right Republicans in other states have to do, exacerbating the extremist lengths that far-right Republicans have to go to in order to make it through their primary. And so I've already heard from jurisdictions with <coughs> successful programs that are fearful of what might come next with their guaranteed income programs because of what Texas is doing. So where do we go from here? We're fighting this. I, I have full trust in our county attorney and his office to fight this. As he said, more likely than not, the Texas Supreme Court elected judges will rule in favor of Paxton because they're scared to lose their primary, which counts on far-right Republican voters. But I hope, as my colleagues expressed, I hope that the court can see the very easy, basic reasons why this is not a serious lawsuit. And these points are truly laughable. Um, so I think it's possible that that they will that they will stand up for for the most basic uh, and obvious interpretation for, of the law. Let me repeat in Spanish briefly, and then we'll take some questions. Como saben, hace casi un año, eh, junio del año pasado, anunciamos este programa Uplift Harris para ofrecer 500 dólares mensuales durante 18 meses a ciertas familias en el condado Harris. El programa está, bueno, empezó a el proceso de aplicaciones. El 22 de marzo se notificó a las familias que recibirían estos fondos. Estas familias llevan semanas planeando tener 500 dólares más este mes. El 24 de abril, en un par de semanas, iban a recibir el primer pago. Pasamos este programa porque este tipo de programas de ingresos garantizados son uno de los programas más eficaces para reducir la pobreza. Tanto Martin Luther King, como el gran economista conservador, el doctor Milton Friedman, como el presidente republicano Richard Nixon han apoyado programas como este. De hecho, hay programas exitosos muy similares a este, no solo en Estados Unidos, no solo en Texas, sino también a nivel internacional. En el condado Harris, uno de cada seis residentes vive bajo la línea de pobreza nacional. Esa es una estadística peor de lo que es en otros condados similares. Además, todos conocemos familias que trabajan, todos trabajan, tienen de repente múltiples trabajos y aún así no pueden pagar por necesidades básicas. Más de 82 mil personas, familias, aplicaron um, a, a este programa y hemos logrado, eh, logramos seleccionar 1,900, más de 1,900 familias. En otras jurisdicciones hay información, hay datos que demuestran que estos programas incrementan las tasas de empleo, fortalecen familias, mejoran la salud, inclusive la salud mental de los participantes. Si el abogado Ken Paxton logra destruir o recibir un mandato judicial para detener y, y de destruir este programa, él será responsable por haberle quitado 500 dólares al mes a 1,928 familias del condado Harris de bajos recursos. Familias que están planeando tener el primer pago de 500 dólares el 24 de abril. Familias que estaban contando en esos fondos para pagar facturas básicas de servicio, supermercado, necesidades básicas. Invito a Ken Paxton a que visite a esas familias, algunas de las familias que han recibido, el, han, han, van a ser otorgadas los fondos y que él directamente les diga 
que ya no van a recibir esos fondos. Ahora, esta es una demanda legal. Nosotros vemos que realmente aquí no hay argumento legal, pero si queremos hablar de temas legales, podemos ver la demanda aquí. Es una demanda bien delgadita porque son solo 16 páginas. Entonces, como las demandas normales, aquí es la primera página. Luego, entonces, habla acerca de lo que ha pasado, en el, 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 que ha sucedido en cuando, cuando inició el programa, eh, dónde se está llenando la demanda. Y aquí, en esta página, entonces, explica sus razones. ¿Por qué están demandando al condado Harris? Como ven, la página eh, usa bastantes espacios. O sea, casi no caben palabras aquí. Página 1. Y esta es la página 2, con argumentos. Y aquí acaban los argumentos. Es el fin de los argumentos. Entonces, son dos páginas. Realmente una, menos de una, porque es, es eh, con espacios. Aquí también tienen información. Eh, realmente no hay argumento legal contra este programa. ¿Qué está diciendo Paxton? Está diciendo que el programa es ilegal porque no hay beneficio público. Bueno, obviamente el beneficio público es reducir la pobreza, lo cual estos pro programas en San Antonio, en Austin, en Arizona han logrado hacer. Luego dice que no, este programa es ilegal porque selecciona los recipientes de una manera de, de al azar. Bueno, para poder aplicar el programa tenían que, ganar, tenían que tener un ingreso de menos del 200% del nivel de pobreza federal en los Estados Unidos. Entonces, no todo el mundo podía aplicar y hay muchísimos programas como este, por ejemplo, el presidente Trump, en el 2020 envió cheques con su firma, inclusive yo recibí uno, y era exactamente lo mismo para familias bajo cierto nivel de ingresos. Dentro de eso, pues no se le puede otorgar a todas las familias, entonces se hace la selección al azar, pero ya se ha reducido a cierta cantidad y así funcionan muchos programas públicos, incluyendo programas estatales. Entonces, eh, un punto más, eh, Paxton no escribió esto en la demanda, pero sí está en un comunicado de prensa que él envió. Dijo que hay varios no ciudadanos que podrían ser elegibles para el programa y me dio la impresión que estaba sugiriendo que estamos intentando ofrecer estos fondos a inmigrantes sin papeles. Como saben, esa batalla la perdí públicamente, entonces, pues los únicos que reciben estos fondos son ciudadanos y personas con estatus eh, de, de residente, personas que tienen asilo, personas que son refugiadas o, u otras protecciones bajo la ley migratoria. Entonces, eh, para clarificar eso, porque de repente ellos exageran. El condado Harris solía ser un sello de goma para el Estado, para los líderes estatales. En 2018, cuando esta comunidad me eligió al puesto de juez del condado, cuando mis colegas también llegaron al liderazgo del condado Harris, empezamos a cambiar las cosas. Ha sido un tiempo difícil, pero hemos logrado muchísimas cosas buenas. Y la verdad es que nosotros no hacemos las cosas como les gustaría a Ken Paxton, ni a Paul Bettencourt, ni al gobernador Abbott. Pero esa es la democracia. Esa es la democracia. Los ciudadanos del condado Harris votaron ya dos veces para elegirme a mí, para elegirlos a ellos a estos puestos. Pero al Estado no le gusta, entonces la estrategia es a cada momento nos demandan. ¿Y qué hacen? Es lastimar a los ciudadanos, a los residentes de ese condado Harris. El mismo abogado nos, nos demandó cuando intentamos expandir la accesibilidad a las urnas de votación en 2020. Otro líder estatal me acusó de haber reducido el presupuesto a la policía, lo cual es 100% falso. Inclusive, este señor Glenn Hager luego retiró la demanda, pues sabía que ahí no había nada. El gobernador Abbott nos, nos demandó uh, sobre las máscaras del COVID. Y bueno, hay muchísimas más en esa lista. ¿Por qué importa eso? Porque son las familias vulnerables las cuales están siendo atacadas en este momento. A mí me pueden llamar los nombres que ellos quieran, pero que no se metan con las familias del condado y menos estas familias trabajadoras de bajos recursos. Esos líderes en Texas, en la extrema derecha, hacen esto 
con impunidad porque saben que las personas que están lastimando no son sus amigos billonarios ni millonarios, pero son personas de, como común y corriente con poder político limitado. Estas familias del condado Harris no tienen acceso a los donantes millonarios y billonarios que Ken Paxton utilizó para financiar su defensa legal penal. Ellos simplemente están intentando sobrevivir. Entonces, eh, quiero también expresar mi preocupación a, a qué podría seguir de aquí, porque es un ataque obviamente antidemocrático, que cada cosa que hagamos la demanden sin realmente ninguna razón de ser. Eh, pero lo otro es que cuando la extrema derecha en Texas decide hacer algo, por ejemplo el tema del aborto, el tema de las pistolas en las escuelas, los otros estados, los otros líderes de extrema derecha tienen que hacer lo mismo, porque si no es una competencia. Entonces la preocupación, y ya he recibido llamadas de colegas en otros estados con programas similares, es que otros estados intenten lo mismo, eliminar estos programas sin razón de ser. Eh, pero bueno, vamos a seguir trabajando, la demanda eh, la estamos respondiendo, el abogado del condado la está respondiendo, eh, vamos a luchar, la Corte Suprema tiene todos los argumentos para hallarnos la razón a nosotros, pero los jueces de la Corte Suprema igual son jueces elegidos, son jueces republicanos y pues ellos intentarán ganar su primaria, de repente decidan no ver la ley, sino ver la política, ojalá no. So we'll leave it there, are there any questions? decir algo para Univision en español. Eh, dice el, la declaración de Ken Paxton que la Constitución de Texas prohíbe expresamente que en cualquier condado, ciudad, pueblo u otra corporación o institución política del Estado otorgue dinero público o caso o cosa a valor en ayuda de cualquier individuo. Eh, estos fondos son unos fondos sobrantes, también dice, de unas ayudas que se proporcionaron en el año 2021. ¿Hay otros condados también del Estado que lo han hecho? ¿Por qué se ha atacado, por qué se ha combatido legalmente solo al condado Harris? Y las formas en las que lo han hecho el condado Harris, las formas en las que están eh, proporcionando estas ayudas para las 1.200 personas, eh, ¿se ajustaban a la ley? Sí, obviamente todo esto se ajusta a la ley. Y, y la pregunta, ¿por qué atacan al condado Harris cuando San Antonio diseñó y, e implementó un programa casi que igual a este en el 2020, Austin en 2022, no hallaron ningún problema. Es político, es eso, y por eso me nombran a mí varias veces aquí, le han puesto un nombre eh, como un poco cute, lo pusieron el Harris Handout, eh, la, la demanda casi que no dice nada, porque es, para ellos es un momento de, de ser como muy luchadores por la causa de extrema derecha. El problema es que lastima a las familias. Si uno lee el estatuto de la Constitución, dice que los programas eh, como estos eh, tienen que, no pueden utilizar fondos públicos para este tipo de, de para, para programas. Bueno, lo que me han explicado los abogados es que han habido muchos casos utilizando ese estatuto, esa parte de la Constitución, y lo que los jueces han dicho ya muchas veces, ya está establecido, es que lo que quieren decir es que hay que utilizar esos fondos para un propósito público. De eso se trata, lo que es el public purpose. Entonces, aquí el propósito público es reducir la pobreza. Y eso es lo que dice en su demanda Ken Paxton. Dice, esto no tiene ningún propósito público. Pues sí que lo tiene, tanto así que Donald Trump en 2020. Entonces es por eso que espero que, que la Corte, que los jueces sean responsables.
obedecer y los pasos. Lavando dinero, que tal y cual, eso sucede. Eh,
schedule before they could book the report date when the case would roll out? Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, to my knowledge, the case has been assigned to Judge Ursula Hall. Uh, the next step in the process will be the setting of a temporary injunction hearing. Uh, this hearing is to decide what happens during the pendency of the case. Uh, but if what we expect to happen happens, uh, when this goes before the Texas Supreme Court, it'll be after that hearing. And whatever they decide at that time is really going to be, it's going to tell us what they believe, right? Um, so our, our hope is that, you know, temporary injunction hearing will get set before Judge Hall. Um, that the parties will be able to go in and make their arguments. And um, once the judge rules, then, you know, the whoever lost in the trial court will take it up to the Texas Supreme Court. But again, I can't stress enough to you, um, the Texas Supreme Court watches the news. Like, they are aware that this is going on. Um, when filings are made in their court on a high-profile issue like this, I, I suspect um, that they're going to want to weigh in on this issue as to the legality of, of uh, Harris County's program. And, Attorney, maybe just to follow up on that, you kind of noted Oh, it, it, his argument is that, you know, his buddy Donald Trump should be able to give checks to people, but Harris County government shouldn't be able to. Um, so, you know, he quotes a couple of uh, provisions in the Texas Constitution and says that there is no public purpose to doing a program like a guaranteed basic income program. Um, and we've seen some so-called experts go in the media and say, well, you can't give away public funds. You can never do that. This is not true. There are many instances where governments provide benefits directly to people, and in many instances, direct cash assistance to people. Uh, but the idea that there's no public benefit to guaranteed basic income programs is just belied by decades worth of data on it. Um, and even some of the studies that have been done, like the pilot programs that have been done since the coronavirus, right? Because you had local governments throughout the country that were doing these exact same type of pilot programs using the exact same federal funding sources. And what they show is that people spend the money on necessities, freeze them up to participate in the economy. It is good for all of us when our neighbor lifts themselves out of poverty. So, you know, what Ken Paxson is arguing is that he doesn't believe any of that because Harris County is trying to do this program. So depending on how the Texas Supreme Court ruling, would that come into question of other counties that are doing similar programs? I don't know, but my guess is that Ken Paxson isn't going to sue other counties because he doesn't get to mention Lena Hidalgo and the progressive Democratic Socialists when he does that. So you'd have, that'd be a question for Ken Paxson. Have you guys heard any heartbreaking stories from people who are worried about not being able to get this money? Well, that, that's what I want him to witness, and, and I, I, I need to check with my department on um, what information we can and can't provide, but we would be happy to have him and introduce him to some of the families. En español rapidito, ¿qué está preparada para decir, qué le podría decir, qué piensa decirle a las familias si no llega ese pago el 24 de abril? Bueno, primero que siento, siento mucho el, el, la, la decepción, la tristeza. Realmente es, es cruel esto y también el momento en, lo, en el cual se anunció. Eh, pero fundamentalmente hay resultados electorales que tienen impactos. Entonces es por eso importante que las personas re, se registren a votar, que participen en elecciones, porque realmente nuestro condado Harris tiene un bully. Cualquier cosa que nosotros hagamos, no lo intentan arruinar. Entonces, tenemos que seguir eh, trabajando juntos. Um, 